Hello and welcome to the first in a series of short tutorials on getting going with Encore. This first tutorial is simply about how to get your sequences from Premiere Pro into Encore so that you can create a project with multiple sequences ready to build into a DVD. Okay, so I'm in Premiere Pro and I've got a series of different sequences and I'm just going to assume for the moment that these sequences are finished sequences that I want to put into my project in Encore. So what I need to do is select one of the sequences that I want to move across. And the simplest way to do it, rather than opening Encore directly, is simply to choose your sequence and go to File, Adobe Dynamic Link, Send to Encore. Now this is going to take this sequence, and it's going to open it in Encore, and it's going to create a timeline automatically so that you're pretty much ready to go. You've got to wait for a minute while Encore opens. And when Encore opens, it comes up with this dialog box. What are you going to name your project? Well, we're going to just name this one Test, and I'm going to save it to my desktop. Obviously, you browse to the location that's suitable for you, and then you have a choice. What are you going to create? Are you going to create the project settings for a DVD, or are you going to create it for a Blu-ray? And also, what television standard are you going to want to? PAL is a UK European standard, and the alternative is NTSC, which is the US standard and also used in Japan. So you need to choose what system is suitable for the DVD to be played on. Is it going to be played in the US? Is it going to be played in the UK? Choose the system that's suitable. And then choose whether you want it to be Blu-ray or DVD. Now if you want it to be DVD, you still have the option to look at the default transcode settings. You can click on that button. And it comes up with a dialog box. And there are only two things that we can change for a standard DVD. We can change the megabits per second, the bit rate. We can go from the default 8 down to 6 or up to 9.4, depends on your player. Personally I would leave it at the default at 8 and go with that. Also you can change what type of audio transcoding. It comes up by default with Dolby Digital. You can look at an MPEG-1 layer 2 or a PCM. I tend again to leave it at the defaults which seem to work pretty much okay. However, if you're going with Blu-ray there are other options. Firstly you'll notice that the bit rates are significantly higher up to 40 megabits per second because obviously there's an awful lot more information to come out of a Blu-ray disc than there is from a standard DVD. However, I'm going to go with the default 15 megabits per second. You do have a choice of codecs. You have MPEG-2 or you have H.264. Now H.264 is actually the newer codec for Blu-ray DVDs. Bear in mind some of the very old or the earliest Blu-ray players won't play H.264. So you need to just double check that the machines are going to be able to play it, but all modern ones will be able to play H.264, and that would generally be my preference. And then you need to decide on the dimensions. Mine is actually a 1440 by 1080 shot. However, you might want it completely widescreen, 1920 by 1080, or you might have a 720 shot or an ordinary 4x3. Obviously, you can choose whatever size is suitable for your audience. And you've got the frame rate, we're going to leave it 25 frames per second, and again you have audio transcoding options. Now we are going to stay with the DVD, we're going to leave it at the standard settings and click OK. We're going to call it test, save it at my default location. It's a DVD, it's PAL, that's fine. Everything's set up, ready to go, click OK. And you'll see that it brings in the sequence. It takes a moment or two, however when it says estimated time, it's usually far quicker than it estimates. Because it's not transcoding it. It's preparing the transcode settings, but what we're bringing in is a dynamically linked sequence. It's not been rendered out from Premiere Pro and brought into Encore. And that is shown by this lavender line. As you see that we've got the video and audio, this is a timeline, and you can see that it's lavender which is telling us it is dynamically linked. In other words, it's open in Premiere Pro and it's dynamically linked and brought in to Encore. Okay, so we have actually brought something in, and I want to introduce you to a window that I use a great deal for editing, and I think when you get used to Encore, you will do too. It's this window here, which is called Flowchart. If you click on Flowchart, you'll see your project, and it says at the moment we've got an untitled project. The untitled project, as soon as you put it in, is immediately going to play this timeline, the Money in Tin timeline. So that's what's gonna happen at the moment. There's no end action set, so we're not complete, and we haven't got a menu in there and really we'd like a menu we'd like the option to be able to play other timelines but at the moment you can see you put the DVD in and it's instantly going to play this timeline now if you click where it says untitled project you'll see over here in the properties panel that you actually have the name of your project under the disk 
and you can change it and we can call this one treasure so we actually have a name for a project hit return it's in there and you'll see it's renamed on the disk however before we go any further we actually want to bring in some more sequences that we can have as timelines to add in to our project how do we do that well you'd have thought you go back to premiere you'd select another sequence and you would go file Adobe Dynamic Link, send to Encore. It won't work. What it will do is it will try and save the previous project and create a brand new project with just this sequence in, which isn't what you want. If you want to bring in any more sequences from this project or any other project into Encore, you need to work directly in Encore. So let's go back to Encore. Right, now we're ready to bring in some more bits and pieces. We've got two lines here, timeline, and project. Project is showing us the timeline here and it's also showing us the dynamically linked sequence. Please note this icon for the timeline. Can you see the little play button? That is telling us what is happening here. That this is the first timeline that will play. So even if you bring in multiple timelines, the one with this little play head in here, in this white circle, will be the first one to play until you set it otherwise. Now how do we bring in other timelines? I could, if I wanted, double click and navigate to it, but actually that's not the best way of doing it. The best way to do it is to bring them in as timelines. So go to File, and then you go to Import as Timeline. Now we need to find the sequences, and this is how you do it. You navigate to your project. You could, if you wanted, bring in individual clips which can be put into a timeline, so you don't have to have the final edited clip if you don't want you could have the full clip as it originally was but if you want the edited clip with all the editing that you've done in Premiere Pro you need to go down to the actual project and when you get to the project you double click on the project file and then you are looking for the sequences now I've got a bin down here that says sequences so I can open up the sequences and I can go down to say counting money and I can double click counting money and it will bring in the sequence so now, as you can see, I've got sequence one, which was the money in tin, and I've now got a second sequence and timeline. So the sequence has been brought in as a timeline for counting money. And if I go to my flowchart, it still shows my disk going in, my first timeline playing, and here is my second timeline down here. This part of the flowchart is called the orphanage R, ah, and it's where orphan items are kept. So if an item is not actually referenced on your disk, and not looked at or used it is down in the orphanage and it's an orphan item so let's bring in another one go file import as timeline and then you can go down again you have to go to the project double click and then we can choose another sequence from our sequence bin choose selling house and bring it in now what happens if you accidentally in your project bring something in and it's not a timeline. Let's just do one more. So I'm going to double click in my project panel as you can in most applications to open up the import dialog box and then I'm going to do exactly the same thing. I'm going to go down to my project and I'm going to open up a sequence and I'm going to choose wallet contents. Double click on there. Now notice that wallet contents has come in as a sequence but it's not a timeline and it's not showing up here in my flowchart. To show up in my flowchart, it must be a timeline. So what I can do is I can right click on that and I can go new timeline and the wallet is now a timeline. And if I go back to my flowchart, you'll see that the wallet content is there. Okay, so that's how I can bring in my items, bring in my timelines or my sequences. Bear in mind, of course, you can bring them from multiple projects. I've done them all from the same project, but you can use lots of other projects and you can bring in those sequences and they're ready to work. You've actually got your timelines down here. They're all ready to go. Now I need to think about a menu. And that's what I'm going to show you in the next tutorial. Mm -hmm.